we've got a yacht race going on. Previously in the Volvo Ocean Race. Beautiful Southern Ocean. Pulled the track off the back of the mast. The uh, whale feeding part, oh, that was pretty cool. This is the scenario of what we call the rich get richer. Only reason we found you is you put your arm in the air. Since the start in Alicante last October, the pace has been relentless. Long legs, short stopovers, and little time to recover. But as the fleet arrived in Hong Kong after 19,000 miles, the race changed gear. The focus now was on in-port racing in two venues with a short 100-mile delivery trip in between. Sadly, the celebrations at the end of a challenging leg to Hong Kong from Australia have been overshadowed by the collision between Vestas 11th Hour Racing and a fishing boat that had resulted in a fatality. The team was badly shaken and their boat seriously damaged. According to a statement from the team, the only viable option was to ship the boat and equipment to New Zealand ahead of the Volvo Ocean Race fleet and carry out the necessary repairs there. Now there were six. Light and shifty winds made life tricky for navigators and tacticians in the two import races in Hong Kong. The results saw the leaderboard reordered, with Dong Feng taking the overall lead in the import series, but only just. Axo Noble was quick to take the first win of two in port races. After a 100-mile delivery trip north to Guangzhou, it was time for another round the boys race and more light wins. Mapfre was back on top, winning the race and leading the import series once again. Now it was time to change gear as teams prepared for leg six to Auckland, New Zealand. A 6,100-mile drag race south where changing gear at the right time would be critical. Each boat is limited to a total of 17 sails for the race, and only nine are allowed on board for each leg. Picking the right sail combination is key, as is knowing when to change. So what's in a Volvo 65's wardrobe? And how do crews choose? Matt Frey's Rob Greenhalge explains. Mainsail, obviously everyone has a mainsail. Very similar sail to last race. This new one is slightly smaller in the head. J1, so that's our normal conventional jib on the forestay. That's our upwind and reaching sail. We've then got a J2, which is a Solent jib, which stepped back from the forestay. That is for upwind work in windy conditions. We've then got a J3, which people may also call the Genoa staysail, and that essentially acts as a staysail inside spinnakers and inside jibs. We've then got the fractional zero, which is predominantly our reaching sail. So reaching in 12 knots upwards, basically. And then as it gets windier, you just bear away with that sail until you're running with it in 25 knots of wind. We've then got the masthead zero, which is essentially a bit of a workhorse. That's there to get the boat through the light air, big, big tight luff jib. We then got our A3, it's a furling spinnaker. That's what we use downwind in you know all, all conditions until it's too windy. Then the new sail they've introduced is the J0, which is basically an upwind jib. Last race we found there was a gap. You know, you'd be on the Master Zero, it would get too much for that. And then you went to the J1 and it was a bit too light for that. So then you might use a fractional sail upwind and that was a little bit tricky, so J0 is coming into the inventory to fill that upwind gap, basically. And it's just up to the teams to figure out how to use it all. But sail selection wasn't the only critical call that lay ahead. The opening stages of the 6,000-mile leg to Auckland presented some tricky tactical challenges. Two days into the leg, the Luzon Strait provided the first test. Team Brunel pulled out a slim lead in the punchy conditions. Then came the big gamble as Axo Noble and Team Hong Kai Scallywag tacked off to the north. So ultimately this is long term, trying to hook into that northerly breeze more than anything. So 
um, yeah, we in theory will get into that first and then be able to be in a position to use the pressure there to come bows down back at the fleet um, and over the top of them, hopefully. But it didn't work. Three days into the leg, both teams were more than 100 miles behind the leaders as the breeze switched off. This feels wrong, very wrong. While further south and in perfect conditions, the front runners were at full pace. Probably the most water I've seen um, earlier. The driving was like averaging 30, 33 knots a breeze and just jamming these waves. It's sort of 25, 26, 28 knots of uh, boat speed. So yeah, probably the most water I've seen, but uh, really, really good fun. But with over 4,000 miles still to go and the light winds of the doldrums ahead, this leg was a long way from over. Seeing the front runners slow down, Axo Noble and Scallywag altered course to avoid the light weather trap and hauled back their 100 mile deficit before taking the lead. Just as the doldrums had shuffled the pack on the way to Hong Kong, the return trip threatened to do the same. Join us next month to see who came out on top.